Welcome to today's vlog as we come to the end of our Advent acrostic series where we've been looking at the heart, the meaning of the word Advent or the season of Advent which leads us up to Christmas. We've used each of the letters of the word Advent to uh, think of a particular word which helps us to uh, see what Advent is all about. So we come now to the final letter, the letter T. And the word I've chosen for T is trust. We see that clearly evidenced in the Christmas story as we find it in the Gospels. But first, perhaps we need to look at an, a, an example where trust is not really evident. And that is in the character of Zechariah. Zechariah is uh, a godly man, we're told. Him and his wife Elizabeth uh, seek to live in God's uh, way, uh, but they have a really long standing and, uh, and desperate desire, and that is to have a son. They've prayed long and hard through the years, and it seems that maybe they've lost hope. But uh, Zechariah is visited by an angel. And the angel says to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. So I remind you that our prayers are heard, even if God doesn't answer them when we want him to or how we want him to sometimes. The angel says, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. So there's the good news. After all these years of, of waiting, the answer is going to be given. But Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man. My wife is well on in years. So although Zechariah has this message from the angel, he doesn't really trust the message. And uh, we see that uh, from that period on until the child is born, Zechariah lost the power of speech. But I want now to turn to two examples of real trust. And the first, of course, is in Mary, that young teenager who also has a visit of an angel who tells her that she's going to give birth to a special child who is going to be the one who will bring salvation to the world. God will work through that young girl uh, to bless the world. And it's, uh, as you know, a, um, a shock to her. She doesn't understand how it can happen. And uh, perhaps even in that moment of the message being received, she'd begin to think of the implications of uh, uh, having a baby when she uh, is such a young woman and not married. She's pledged in marriage to Joseph, but the father is not Joseph. What will Joseph think? What will her family, her friends, her neighbours think? How is it all going to work out? You could uh, forgive Mary for having uh, grave doubts, but instead she shows incredible trust in God. She says, I am the Lord's servant. I am willing to accept whatever he wants. Isn't that great faith, great trust in God? I am willing to accept whatever he he wants. An amazing young woman. And then of course Joseph, the one to whom she's pledged in marriage, which in those days was about as strong as marriage, uh, as we know it. In fact, probably stronger than today's marriage, which sometimes doesn't seem to be uh, a great commitment in some people's eyes at least. But Joseph we don't know how, but he finds out that Mary is expecting. Uh, he's, he too will be shocked. Has Mary slept with another man? Has she been unfaithful to me? Should I divorce her? He is a man of honour and he wants he's going to divorce Mary, but not in a public way that will bring shame on her, but quietly. But again, he receives an angelic visitation. In fact, this is in a dream. And the angel says to him, Joseph, son of Mary, do not be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary. For the child within her has been conceived by 
the Holy Spirit. Mary has not been unfaithful, Joseph. Go ahead and marry her. And we're told that when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Again, a, a fantastic example of someone who trusted in God. Even perhaps when he didn't understand fully, he trusted God. He was obedient to God. And so there is uh, two. there are two great examples for us. And the question for us is, do we trust in God, even when we don't understand, even when everything seems confusing, even when God speaks to us and uh, we seem that it doesn't make sense, or God's plan for our lives, or God, God's plan for a loved one is not what we would want or expect. When everything seems so confusing, do we still trust God? God is worthy to be trusted. He is faithful. He loves us so much. And there's the message of Christmas. Let's trust God. Let's praise God through this season and into the new year. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.